Now we're going to talk about the guys that I am a little bit concerned about after already going through Dave's list and Heath's list. So you see the five names that we're going to show you. And again, as we've been saying, this is really more about what their cost is, what their average draft position is. And we're looking at the CBS Sports average draft position. So again, as we said, a lot of big names on all of our list. Aaron Rodgers is the headliner for me at the quarterback position, along with Ezekiel Elliott, Debo Samuel, Jalen Waddell, and DK Metcalf. And you see what the ADP is for all of these guys. For Rodgers, which is where we'll start, is he's still being drafted as the 10th quarterback off the board, and I just don't understand why. I get it, he's a two-time MVP. If we were doing a list of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, he could certainly be at the top of the list or in the top five. But from a fantasy perspective, it just feels hard to say he's going to have another career season or another MVP type season without Devontae Adams or for what it's worth without Mark Lazada's Scantling on the field. But I wanna ask you guys this, are we just maybe too down on what has been and just an amazing player, and maybe he'll just get by without Devontae Adams? Well, all history would suggest the answer to that question is yes, because, but I don't think so. I just don't, I don't believe that Alan Lazard or anybody else in that receiving court can come close to what Adams has been. I think that we'll see them lean on the run game and the running backs more than they have even in the past. And it's just really, it's a tough act for a guy who doesn't run at all to produce like a top six or seven fantasy quarterback. He's been able to do it a couple times because he had the best wide receiver in football. He doesn't anymore. The thing that I like about him, if you get him at the right price, he's still gonna produce at a very good level. It's just not gonna be top five level. And I think that's the concern uh, about where Rodgers is. So don't forget about him, but I don't think you wanna reach for him. I think that's really the, the underlying theme is he still be good. He just, don't he just won't necessarily be great, at least in our eyes. Uh, Dave, let's talk about Ezekiel Elliott because I just don't like him based on where he's being drafted. He's the 16th running back off the board, still going in round three. And for, for what he is going to be, we know he's going to get a lot of work. But this offense could be absolutely miserable by comparison to where it's been because Tyron Smith is now going to miss the majority of the season. Lyle Collins is gone. Connor Williams is gone. Part of Ezekiel Elliott's strength and appeal has been this offensive line. And so while Jerry Jones, the owner, is keep continuing to say it's his backfield, I just can't get behind drafting him in this range. So that's why I'm out. Are you out on Ezekiel Elliott as well? I'm drafting almost everybody on this page ahead of Ezekiel Elliott. I see Damian Harris on there. I won't go that far. Same thing with Cam Akers. Uh, I think that's it. I think everybody else I'm taking ahead of Ezekiel Elliott. Pierce over Even Zeke? Damian Pierce. Okay. I, I think I if, I if I don't have Pierce over Zeke already, I need to have it there. And the reason why is because his numbers without Tyron Smith over the course of his career, and especially in the last two years, are way down compared to when he does have his offensive line there and that offensive tackle there. And he's referred to Tony Pollard as a guy who he hopes keeps him healthy and fresh all year long. I think the Cowboys are going to rotate both backs. We might be criminally underrating Tony Pollard and what he can do in this offense, but you should not overrate Ezekiel Elliott at all. I know he's been great for fantasy. I think those days are gone. I think round four is an okay time to you know take a look, depending on what the running backs are still there, but... Round three, I just can't do it. I would actually prefer him in round five, and we know that's probably not going to happen based on his name recognition. Debo Samuel was starting to see his ADP slide a little bit. He actually was kind enough to join us on our fantasy football today draft-a-thon, so I hate putting him on this <laughs> list. But this, you know, if I, if I was on with Debo and I was talking to Debo, you know what I would have told him? And I think he would agree with me. This is not necessarily about him being awful. This is about the guys around him being better. Trey Lance being a different type of quarterback. Brandon Ayuk, and I know he spoke to you guys about that, about how excited he yeah. is about him and what he's been doing, and still George Kittle being there. I think he would probably say he'd like to have George Kittle healthy for the majority of the season. So Heath, you're kind of in a similar situation with me on Debo. Round three feels great. I got him round three of our podcast league. I think he fell too far in that one. He was the 36th overall pick. But early round three, I think it's fine. I've seen his ADP around 20th overall. On some sites, he was still a borderline first round pick. I just can't get behind that because I don't think he's going to run as much. I don't think the quality of passes from Trey Lance are going to be as good. And again, if Kittle stays healthy and Ayuk does what he did at the end of the last season, he could be fighting for targets. I'm just glad we showed this graphic now and not last night when I was on with Debo Samuel. That would have been a disaster. But yeah, no, it's, it's a combination of that efficiency that we've just not seen before. The touchdowns are going to crater off of the rushing production. We don't know how much of the rushing production is going to be there. And we don't know how many touchdowns Trey Lance is going to steal. It's nothing to do with Debo Samuel's talent. It's just a situation and a cost argument. And he seems to be fine. He was smiling on the, on the show last <laughs> night. So for people concerned about the injury that he's dealing with, hopefully he will be 100% for week one. Let's combine the next two wide receivers. We've got Jalen Waddle and DK Metcalf. Waddle dealing with uh, the lower leg injury. I was already out on him to begin with. I don't understand why he's still being drafted as a top 20 receiver. And our projection has, projections has him at, at the number 10 receiver. It feels as if they're not accounting for Tyreek Hill being on the team. I don't think that we're going to see 140 targets for Jalen Waddle unless Tua Tungavailoa turns into Josh Allen and throws 600 times as Dave was alluding to. 
So I'm a little bit concerned about Waddle based on his price even now, and especially if he's not 100%, I would take all these receivers drafting, getting drafted behind him ahead of Jalen Waddle at this point. He's outside of my top 24 in non-PPR, barely inside in PPR, because I do think that Tyree Kill is gonna dominate targets. And then for DK Metcalf, we have the situation with him where you know what you're getting. Geno Smith is not going to be the best quarterback for DK Metcalf's skill set. And so we'll see what happens. He did score, I think it was four touchdowns in the three games that he played with Geno Smith last year. So hopefully that's what we can hang our hat on. But if in fact he's not throwing Marshawn Lattimore to the ground and making some unbelievable plays, the quality of targets are not going to be there for him. So I'll ask both of you real quick, just give me the name. Which of the two receivers do you prefer? Waddle. Waddle for you, Dave? Waddle. Okay, Waddle for you. And does format matter? Okay, so you're taking Waddle regardless, Dave? No, no, no. It does for me. I think I'd take DK ahead of Waddle and not PPR. Right, because of the touchdowns there. I, t I totally get that. I would take Waddle over DK in PPR, but I would take Metcalf over Waddle in non-PPR. But really, from what you where you have to draft both these guys, I'm probably out on both of them just because, again, a little bit of a concern 